I will tell you, I'm going to actually ring in that first topic that I wanted to talk about by, by showing. Um, uh, uh, let me share my screen here, and I want to go to this, this actual image here. Um, this image has so many nuances to it. Um, it is, and you can see, obviously, he's a, um, uh, an individual that you hold in high regard who, who even posted this, and one who has so far snubbed me to join us, and I say that tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> However, I, I will tell you, John, there, to at least me, what, what I find interesting is that he put this out for general comment, um, or at least someone did, who's a, 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 a sports medicine doctor out there. And I see who they have copied into this image, and one of which was, was you. And it's interesting to see the comments that came in. And then one of the other people named in this just couldn't take it any longer. And they had to say, John Letty, what do you think of this? <laughs> And, and so there's a there's a little string down below that, and your comments had the depth of understanding that I want to tap into when it comes to real pathology, because in your comments, um, you you inferred that there was some uh, something you can gather out of the fact that there was no, uh, there was claimed no dynamics on 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 on. On ultrasound, and what I just need to be quiet and 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 have you talk about it. But but again, for listeners or or, or viewers or just me, I want to orient myself. This is actual Achilles tendon, correct? This is I'm, posterior tibia here, correct? Yeah. And this is the FHL uh, tendon. Uh, so far, would you give me full marks? Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. So we're also expecting this to be, I, I believe, Kager's fat pad, and we would expect the calcaneus to be up in here. And if there were retrocalcaneal activity, it would be up in this, this area here. Now, the first thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to shut up, I promise. I don't know if that's a comment you guys even allow over there or, or, or whatever. But, but the dimension I'm seeing when this goes into dynamics makes me feel as though there is a compromise in the actual fibers of this tendon. As it moves back and forth, the dimension here seems as though it goes down to almost half the fibers here. And I don't know why the first thing y'all didn't see and again, it's because I don't know what I'm looking at, is a partial tear. Um, it just seems to me that the dimension of this as we hit play seems to be that there is almost a stub like whatever and a, a small dimension. Now, I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, um, it would be unusual. Uh, I'm just wondering whether I can get the video up on my sister's. Uh, right, so let me go. Uh, right. So have you got it? Yes, I have it's to go down to the, there you go, yeah. I'm going to go full screen. Yeah, yeah I've got it. that beautifully represented, John. Okay, let's look. So let's see if I can do this. So we've got, um, so this is muscle here, muscular tendon okay. structure. Okay, okay. This is all muscle coming down on both sides. Got you, because there's more of a pinnate structure to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then this this part is what catches my eye. This looks irregular here. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, so just down here. And, and, and as it goes, it's catching there. Ah. Yeah, it's just and a little bit there. So that... I have. I don't see this population. This is a dancers, and I don't yeah. see them. So, so these guys. So, which is why I comment on the on the technical side, but I'm, I'm not going to uh, comment uh, on uh, the practice on on, on the practice because yeah. you know I will yeah. I will see this sort of thing uh, once every couple of years probably. So I I won't see these dancers with this sort of thing as a as a routine. They will just turn up on my list. And and they will move on. I will post them to someone with more expertise in rehab uh, for this group, or uh, onto onto one of the sports physicians who I who I know who who have an interest in dance. 
so what you get here though is that this is the sleeve yeah this is this is your sheath coming around here and and this is these look to, to my sort of untutored eye in this population uh, to be a little bit of irregularity at the muscular tenderness junction but I'm, what, what I think we're seeing is uh, relatively normal fibers there and some possibly some tendinosis there but again this wouldn't be the the shot that I would uh, do that this would be a normal thickness potentially but you but you would look in another area to try and, and, and at a different angle if you were trying to assess that one thing we can say is that the body is responding by creating fluid somehow yeah. and for some reason and it is the it is the metabolics of irritation yes. it is the process of healing or at least it is a fixation in a process that is not being allowed to heal that the body will then begin to say look i have put in the time to go through the inflammatory phase and you are going to still be using this without get letting me go to a complete uh, remodeling of this problem and 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 there is that continued almost fixation in that cycle or is this just an effort on the part of the body to make a blister or a bursa that it says you must need that support or is it hard to extrapolate that oh, well the things i things i would see is that there's no there's no synovial thickening here and this is oh, a right. synovial synovially lined uh sheath presumably okay okay so, so there's no no evidence of synovitis here wow the fact that you can just look at a line john and tell me that there is i'm i'm begging you to find me some of your images to allow me to understand the differentiation in that line for you to be able to say with confidence there is no synovial thickening would that white line just be wider no there would be a uh, th it might be wider but there would be some i uh, think uh, see if we can uh, well I'll, I'll i'll pick out some pictures some okay nice ballpark pictures of uh, tibialis posterior uh, synovitis which is is one we see fairly routinely uh, but yes, yeah, so so it is. Um, you're blistering essentially. I would say this is like a, you know, in simple terms, what yes. you think is, is that you rub, you get a blister, yep. Yep. and and I suspect there is rubbing there. For, <laughs> for, they first of the year, lawn raking without gloves, and yeah. it's just overuse pressure irritation that's causing the body is desperate to get one surface away from the other. So it creates this waterbed. Well, or, or or you think of it, there is friction there, yeah. and and you get an exudate. You get you get the fluid uh, coming out and, and collecting, uh, much like an irritated knee. And and whether that you think of that as a physical uh, a physiological uh, process, or whether you think it is a uh, a reactive yep. uh, a process with a much uh, with a neutral. I think of it more as a as a neutral process. Than a some a, a physiological process that is going wrong. I think this is. Uh, I think of it more in terms of that it is just when tissue gets rubbed like that. You compensatory, get, a compensatory response to a to, to an action. Not even a compensatory one. I, I I suspect it is. It is perhaps even a mechanical thing. A, a uh -huh. fluid fluid drawn into the area. I wouldn't claim yep. any basis for that in in science. <laughs> but I'm not. I don't necessarily see it as a as a conscious uh, sort of response. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. If if you need time to find that synovial thickening, or John, if you'd like to put that down for a thing that you can show me in the future, uh, it you take me just, very long at all. Okay, actually. that'd be great. So, so this is all tendon. Orient us again to where this image is, John. This is um, this here is probably the the head of the talus. Okay. So this is the spring ligament here, or element of it thickened. Uh, this is short axis of the tibialis posterior, 
And with the hyper with the hyperacroic island simply being what? Just the part of a tendon that sometimes is normal. This, this, this is a swollen tendon that is uh, that's uh, that's tendinotic, despite the fact that it's it's not dark. Okay. Uh, and this is and this is the lining here. It actually goes all the way around, but it, it's quite chronic. So you can see the synovial sheath is now baggy. So it has been bigger before. It has got okay. some Wow. So you're even looking at the nuances of the folds in the actual synovial membrane, saying that at one time it could have held far more, um, a, a greater dimension. Yeah, there's been a, 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 a process that's been ongoing and you see it's less tidy. You see, you, you see a classical uh, biceps tendinosis, tenosynovitis, which is not actually that common, but you see it's a nice round ring of thick and synovium in around a tendon that it may or may not be swollen. Uh, but here, this is much more complicated appearance. Uh, and, and the lining is, is not nicely contained. A nice fresh one, I would expect to be nice and round. You know, and, and if, if the wall is thickened and there's reaction in there, there's the synovitis part of the tenosynovitis. But this is a little wayward. It's not, it's not fully encapsulated. It's expanded at some stage and it's now, you know, like a, like a saggy bag. This is so helpful, John, to me, to try to get my head around it in my own mind. It's much like plaque in an artery that's starting to form and it, and it, it only, only it doesn't have the rigidness. It's just a, it, it's a case of a, uh, a, a, an extended problem and it is a re reactionary response inside the synovium yeah yes that's uh, that that synovial lining it grows it swells up like uh uh like something you'd get at the fairground you know like a, <laughs> a let me see if i can escape from that picture. so when when you when you were when we were showing the 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 original image and you looked up and it was a white line, and it had no indications of any other type of mid-range gray scale uh, against the anechoic fluid or the darker fluid. You just said there is no synovitis, or I forget the term, no thickening, no, no synovial thickening that, that you saw there. That's yeah. incredibly helpful to me. Um, and, and so, yeah, the... Um, uh, and you do have to be cautious if you go back to his uh, uh, if we go back to and share Edith cannot be played reload this if I share again uh, we go back and have a look at uh, Carlos's uh, images here have you got him back up on the screen uh, I do so now you, yes perfect what what you what you have to be cautious of is your gain because on a bad day, there will actually be synovitis there, but it will. But because of the your the way your system is set up, and that's not necessarily a good system or a bad system, but where the levels are set, uh, and uh, how this how the the gray scale is set up, uh, you can actually have a thickened layer there and it be invisible. You know, you, you can you can not see it because it wasn't bright enough. I think there's a, if I stop sharing, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's see if we go back to here. If I go physics. Oh, search. I'm going to pause this again, John. Yeah. That's I'm back on because I, did, I thought you were going to share images. Uh, no, well, I'm just looking for a lecture I did many years ago where I had uh, a uh, uh, this physics uh, oh, man. It's, no the, I have a, I have some pi a picture of uh, a biceps with synovitis where I've uh, demonstrated I think uh, the uh, how to uh, We'll come back to that one. 
Uh, well, yeah. let, let, let me clarify something. When you were talking about, we went back to uh, Carlos's um, um, image, and and you were pointing to the area where previously it looked quite free of thickening. You yeah. had said, and this is interesting to me and concerning, on a bad day, uh, and and then you referred it to the setup of the actual um, imaging processing of the hardware that that particular and, yes. and so I think what what I read you saying is that sometimes the image I mean sometimes the machine may be not optimized for this particular study and what you will see is something show up differently differently than reality or in a yes. clearer percent of truth no uh, a, a difference to reality you don't you you won't see the um, uh, let me just find it I've got a picture, hyper, hyperechoic. Uh, it's one of the artifacts. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can. I'm just going to shift things around on here. Uh, if I can minimize that. Sorry, I'm. Let me just assure you, John, I am perfectly. Right. If you have a look at this image here. Uh, are, are you are you seeing the image on the screen? I'm not. Okay, right. I'm sharing. Uh, go here. This is an old slide. Oh. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, this isn't the one I was thinking of, but this does show what I mean. Is you see how this synovium here is thicker? Yes. Can you see? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Let's see if I. Go there. Oh, there go. Have you got that up there? Yep, I have so it. Here, you see the lining is is not thickened at all. Yes. Or you can barely see that. And this image is you can see a nice thick lining here. And all and you did was much. wag the probe, or all you all did. I did was, all I did was wag the probe. What the 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 analogous bit is that you uh, is uh, that's a that's what it looks like that what you do when you change it isn't wagging the probe uh though that that can be part of it uh the important thing in a uh, uh and i'm hoping you'll see uh, i've got no no it's not in this slide it's usually there's a bit where i talk about again towards the end i was doing less hyperchoic uh yeah, sorry. I just I'm gonna I'm gonna have one last attempt to find. No worries, John. <laughs> I promise we won't make this longer than an hour anyway. So it, it, yeah. it, I, I'm perfectly fine with it. Women's health. I don't want women's health. I'm trying to find some uh, when, particularly when the structure is a little bit deeper. Uh, that synovium can be very low echogenicity. It can be very subtle. And if you're setting, if it's a difficult picture, or if you're just in a hurry and you don't notice, you forget whenever you look at fluid to turn the gain right up. So whenever I look at fluid, what my safety check is to just turn the gain right up. Because if it's fluid, the whole of it should get brighter when you maximize the, the gain. It, it, it all gets brighter and nice and evenly. What you'll get if there is some uh, very low echogenicity material, and that can be as, as serious as cancer, is you get uh, uh, you get a more mottled appearance, or you see that rind that you saw there appears out of nowhere as you turn the gain up, because the dark, the, the truly fluid stuff stays uh, stays relatively dark. It, it may look dirtier as the gain goes too high. But then you get this rind appear. Yes, and that's on the vitus, and and that you will miss uh, if you just uh, just look at the uh, just accept it. Just because it's black on your picture doesn't mean it's actually black. It just means that with your settings, it is so much blacker than everything around it. Now you but, use uh, the term synovitis, um, yeah. and and you know there's so much 
brain power spent on whether we want to throw the actual inflammatory process in by the use of that term or whether yeah. or not we want to just say synovial thickening. Uh, would yeah. you, at, since, we're, since I want to talk about the pathology of this, at what point do you throw on the Doppler and, and, and can you just do a broad brush of whether or not it has applications in microstructures? It looks, I've always put on the colour, wherever there was any compromise. You're likely to get vascular. It is rare, not, not n never, but it is rare to see hypervascularity, neovascularity in a tendon that isn't low echogenicity. You do very occasionally get these very marked uh, vascular responses within tendons uh, that that do not look low echo on grayscale. You get, um, but within the synovium, you see synovial thickening. And when that, when that wall, that uh, syn synovial sheath wall is thickened, we describe that as a post an inflammatory or post-inflammatory response. But normally the vascularity, that, that acute, inflammatory change is associated with this edema with this low echogenicity change within the t within the lining uh, and so that area i showed you before with the uh with the picture of the tibialis posterior that looked chronic so it was patchy so it, it wasn't an, an even lined around the tendon uh and it was uh, let me just show you again Let's go whiteboard and share. So if we come down. So you've got your tendon made up of your, and the, the bright dots are obviously dark dots. So this is a normal, normal tendon or a slightly swollen tendon. And this is the lining of the sheath. And you should have a nice, the synovitis is usually a nice, reasonably parallel line all the way around. Yeah? The normal synovium or synovitis? No, normal sino, typical synovitis. Okay. Typical synovitis. Everything in that area would, would just be dark. And then you would expect to see some hypervascularity within there, some increase in blood flow. So uh, when you put the colour on, you should see lots of little dappled uh, changes there. Uh, what you see in as you get uh, as this gets older, and that inflammatory process uh, passes, is that the wall remains thickened, but it becomes more fibrous because that's what the inflammatory process does. It lays down fibrin. So you get so the that it becomes brighter, not necessarily bright, but brighter. Yes. And it forms a more structural appearance as opposed to just being a fuzzy lining. Yes. You know, like uh, uh, I sometimes think of it like uh, sometimes you get, you get uh, that watching up stick with a sponge on it. Did you say you wa that? a washing yeah. up stick? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, what, yes. Washing up thing with, with a sponge attached, one yes. of those fancy ones. Yes. Yes. So, you reach your and back. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but, 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 but it's a hard stick. Your yes. firm uh, base of your uh, fibrous base of your uh, sheath. And then yes. this, this spongy material on top of it. Well, that spongy material becomes more like a sort of rubbery type process thing. And, and because it's not got normal structure, I presume as it wears, it wears in different shapes. So, so instead of getting a nice parallel line like that, you get something that looks a little bit craggy and irregular. And those would be the sort of, sort of post-inflammatory changes that I would expect to see. And those would be a little bit more heterogeneously bright because yeah. they've taken on more fibrin as opposed to it being a reactionary filling up of a general just covering like that, yes. l l like the sponge. Yes. Yeah. I want to... Um, I'm going to take back host really quick, John, because I have just, I have you just a few more minutes and I want to, 
I want to risk being vulnerable to a scan on an elbow. Yep. And, and I'm going to set this up trying not to be too wordy, but yep. I will tell you that one of the disconnects that I'm fearful of as I go back and look at my scans are that yep. in, the, in the mind of a master, He's going to say, why in the world didn't you stay on the common extensor tendon? Why did you scan it or why did you sweep it in that plane and you totally lost this or lost that? Now, I know that's going to happen and I really do appeal for you to be as candid to say, look, will you please establish a scan pattern so that when you send a 30-second loop, I can tell your first interrogating bone, then you're in, do you follow what I'm saying? But so, so I'm going to just share this with you because I'm giddy scanning a patient and, and I'm all over the place. So I'm, 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 I'm going to just show this to you here. Oops. Yeah. I'm going to take back the uh, host here. Yeah. Let me see how I do that. Here we go. Reclaim host. All right, and now I'm going to go to here. I'm going to show this, and I'm going to ask, are you able to see my screen with the images that I, for instance, if I pull this up, do you see this? Are you seeing an image at all, John? Uh, no, I'm seeing your, your page with, with stuff on it. All right, I'm, I'm showing an image here, so I'm going to stop share. I'm going to try to share one more time. While I look at this, do you see now anything? Yes, that's, you're, good, you're good to go. All right. So I want to just go back and try my best to to appeal for you to understand what, what I'm looking at. Right. Um, this is going to be, the top of the screen is oriented on the distal humerus. And as I come down, what's showing up is the lateral condyle. That's the capitellum showing up down there, and that's the radial head. Yep. So I'm just trying to give you a picture of where I am. So yep. I, I, I would like, as I go through it, to ask you a couple things. Um, and again, please feel free. I, I'll just move on. There's, there's, I'm seeing what looks like the actual capsule of the elbow, the anterior capsule of the elbow, being filled out of this ca uh, radio capitellar joint with, with debris. Uh, there is hyperechoic points within this debris. And, and this particular patient uh, came to me um, with um, the possible report that, that the x-rays seem to indicate to the radiologist that there could be an infection going on. And, and, and so what I don't know, I, I've seen things about gas bubbles, I've seen things about all that kind of stuff, but she also has a diagnosis of RA and she's refused to take the methyltrexate. So yeah. what we're looking at as, as the radius, and, and, and I'm just going to go through this just briefly, um, the, the, the echo texture of, and I've got so many images that I just wanted to kind of briefly or, orient you to. This is the long axis one. And yeah. again, the, the, the material that's showing up there, I'm going to quickly go back. I'm going to see whether or not I can actually then show you the short axis one. Are you seeing images or no? Not the moment, no. You've dropped right. off. It's dropped away. It was up until a second ago. All right. I don't know why. Hang on. Let me go back to where I'm. See if there's a way I can just open and keep you up. I can't seem to. I see you yeah. there. I worked the last time. I don't know why I can't get it. This I had that for a few seconds. I'm going to get, I'm going to take this one off. This is the one that we shared at How the first. Big are the files? What's that? How big are the files? I don't think it's actually it. It I, I'm showing it to you from a, a web hosting. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I'm going to just try to go back to shorter screen. And what's really troubling is that when I can do it once and then it doesn't do it again. And uh, I'm going to go to here and I'm going to go back down to I'm our screen. Coming, coming in and then going out again. Here we go. Now you'll see it and I will drag it back. I'm going to start on this one. Um, we're, we're, we're now, again, what I call short axis. Um, I'm actually quite happy I use the Clarius because you can't expect better images out of me. <laughs> so we're, like we're, we're looking at the echo texture here of the lateral condyle as I'm coming down, and we're approaching it from the anterior view here. What we're going to start to see as I get closer and closer, the capitellar, the capitellum drops off, and we start to see the dimension of that that mass here. Uh, I then go yep. on to the round echo texture of the radius right about there, and we're literally seeing erosions all around the radial head there. Uh, and yep. I start to see, and here's my question for you. I start to see... Now, the classic location for the synovial fluid being the neck of the radius, that they, they say it's just below that annular ligament where it expands way up. And, and I'm seeing anechoic fluid in the space of that radial neck, and I'm still seeing this complex fluid until I get here. And now my mind sees here we have complex fluid. Uh, I'm just not getting my head around what I'm looking at, John. Uh, is to you, does that, does that fluid material look like it's just a classic RA um, mass, or could this be infection and that's pus? Stand by one. Okay, if you, uh, can, I, can you stop sharing? Yes. And I'll see if I can share. Okay. Let's see if I can. No, you st uh, you still got me disabled. So, ah, if you enable me, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say, oh man, I've got to go back to a host for you. That's right. I don't know why. I... Okay, I'm back to you now. Yeah, good. And I'm promising yeah. your wife 15 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have a look. Uh, if I go, I'll just move things around a little bit. It's easy to just make everything big screen. So let's pop that. Uh, let's see if I can. How do I, if I share, if I share screen? Good. You tell me if I've, you've got it up on there. Put that up there. That up there. So there's three. So here's your. So that's what you hey. we were looking at. Yeah. 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 And let's see. Oops. And where's the other one? Look. Yeah. Okay. So these these are, are two uh, screenshots of, yeah. of what you saw. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's a patient walks in and with this sort of appearance, and my immediate response thought is that this is all synovium, all synovitis. Oh. Uh, rather than being fluid, uh, I don't know that the differential is uh with infection and that would uh, and and the radiologists are, are perfectly right to do that i'd caveat this that uh i can't comment diagnostically on any uh yeah. american image yeah yeah because yeah I'm sure it can cover me for that yeah uh but but from a an impression of what i would be thinking if i saw this uh in my practice is that you've got synovitis throughout this area this is probably synovitis as well, rather than fluid. Okay. 
and and and, and if and, and if you're seeing it as fluid, it may well be that that's because of the uh, contrast issues. All right. So it just looks black on the picture because it's relatively dark, and and that's so, so that's the way it's being presented uh, by the scanner. But, when uh, go ahead. There is not a good boundary here to make it uh, there. It's a better boundary there, but this is not a good direction to be looking at, at boundaries. Uh, so, uh, so here, you don't get a nice, clear, defined boundary. And you usually get a better boundary when it is pus synovium. That synovium pus boundary is a proper boundary. You know, those are, these are very distinct structures. And so though pus can be similarly low echogenicity, uh, it, it, it can be completely clear sometimes uh, on ultrasound. Uh, if you were getting bright pus, I would expect there to be a, a boundary there, a nice, clear, you know, sac fluid. Yes. Whereas this is... but. But I don't think imaging is entirely specific. Okay. Uh, on that. So I wouldn't I wouldn't bet my my uh, uh, insurance premium on that. <laughs> well, it it it's it's this kind of stuff that I'm just interested in in hearing you. You had said boundary, like there would be a boundary between the synovial lining and a cloud of pus, like yes. it was encapsulated somehow. What would that boundary be composed of? Would it be the the, the lining, uh, no. The, the no, the boundary is is the boundary. That is, you have uh, a boundary on ultrasound is bright. It isn't a structure. It is the boundary between two structures. Uh, the sound uh, is what we would call an interface. Yes. Okay. So if it, it, it's just an interface between the two, would be much clearer. Yes. You would okay. expect clarity at that boundary because there are differences. Like uh, when you see the, uh, uh, oh, what is the, what do they call that, right? Uh, the sign where you've got a, uh, where they used to say you've got a supraspinatus tear. Cartilage interface. Cartilage interface sign. Yes. That cartilage looks like uh, a capsule. It isn't a capsule. It is just the way the sound responds when it, Yes. When it passes, it tries to pass yes. from fluid to cartilage. Okay, it, that response is enough to produce yep. that. That and it looks exactly the same as a synovial lining. In fact, that's what you're seeing. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm now getting eager to, to tap into your brain with more stuff. This this image uh, th throughout that what you're referring to as an elaborated synovium or 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 a, a hypertrophied synovium, it is just reactive with with doppler it, it it lights up like a christmas tree is that more this i would expect to confirm what i thought i would expect the whole of this to be bright with uh covered in doppler ah okay because that's what happened and 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 is that another differentiation between just complex fluid because if it was just a bunch of folds of synovium you would expect more hyperemia than yes. that th th than a bag of just plain white blood cells or yeah. no if, if if this was pus yeah here, there would be no blood flow in it there would be no vascularity with it. Ah, see, this is this is pivotal to me because the sucker, the sucker had all types of exciting things in it, and and yeah. and, and and let me ask you one more thing while I have you here. If it was pus, and I sonopalpated, would it not move around like a snow globe? No, it doesn't wouldn't. have to. There's normally will. In fact, what I what, what a nice trick you can do, which works works well sometimes is um you know do you have a you have a gain control on your color doppler yeah yes so, so you put your color doppler on and then you turn the gain right down so you don't see any flow okay yeah and what that does is it kicks out a whole load of power because it puts a lot of en doppler uses a lot more energy than the uh uh, the output of the scanner is significantly higher and it will push 
in some cases it will push the fluid around just the, the Doppler signal. No. Yes. No. You see, it, you see it all the time when you're scanning testes, when you see fluid and testes, you, you put the color on and you turn it down so you don't see any of the color and the, and the, uh, and, and the power of the sound going through will create circulation within the, the thing. So you don't need to push it at all. <laughs> really? It's, yeah. it's like it's a shear wave that's looking at elastography and it's just, it's doing kind of like a, 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 a tidal pool where they're, where they're generating. It's, batter, it's battering the, because it, because ultrasound is just momentum. It's just yes. transmitting. So and, 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 and in order to pass get that momentum onto the fluid. In order to get the frequency differentiation to evaluate whether that the, the, the movement is toward or away from the scanner, it has to both put out and then listen. Uh, fascinating yeah. stuff. Let me ask you this um, in, in the last few minutes. You use color Doppler, um, and yet there's things that they, power Doppler and color Doppler. I've always been biased in my work to use power Doppler because. It is less. I don't know whether or not it. 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 It seems to me that the. It, it's more precise with slow flow because that, it doesn't care is whether. They, is what they tell you. And well, that that's is not. That's not exciting that is, to hear because it might not be true. <laughs> well, that's the point. Um, people have been telling people to use power Doppler for that because. Uh, that's what Power Doppler was set up to do. And it's very fashionable, everyone does it, apart from myself. And I think I've heard one or two other people agree with me. Uh, but they were good people. Uh, there are a lot of new technologies as well uh, coming on. I do not use Power Doppler at all for, uh, for uh, this sort of work. I always use Color Doppler. Now it is device dependent. Every every machine has different qualities, but in general, the machines I use, the color Doppler is better because you can. It is more. It is easier to adjust the sensitivity, in my opinion, and in my hands, it I can adjust the sensitivity of the Doppler, uh, and because it is because it is not as sensitive to flow close to the plane of the probe. Point of color Doppler, a uh, power Doppler, is that it shows flow. If I can show you, if I can, I'm gonna stop share and share again. And I'll just show you this, make this point, because it can be maybe quite important. Uh, I share screen again. Uh, this is gonna be a, a, a vast oversimplification. I just erase all my previous mess. I haven't found the quick way of doing that. Um, okay, so we go back to draw. Yeah, so a normal line. So what, what are we saying? The color Doppler signal. Uh, you have a blood vessel. Come down here. So you, you have a blood vessel going through there, and it's got blood flowing in it. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I haven't drawn that. Yeah, blood, blood moving. The sound... I can draw, get me a wiggly line back. Uh, power Doppler doesn't uses a Doppler signal to show that that is moving slightly, moving away or towards the probe. So that, you know, coming back there, that's moving slightly away. That sound is, is moving slightly away. The, sorry, the, the blood flows slightly away in that direction. So you get a little bit of signal back, even when the flow is reasonably parallel to the, to the surface of the probe. Obviously, Doppler works much better when the flow is directly away from the probe. Yes. Yeah? So this is the probe up here. Uh, am I sharing the correct screen, by the way? Yes, I'm I, following you entirely. Yeah, okay. So the idea is that by using power Doppler, which doesn't show you doesn't give you any directional information, but just gives you the whole quantity of the, all the, uh, it registers the number of changing signals it gets. Now, uh, you have to go away and read that because I haven't said that very well. But what that means is that you, when you're using it, any movement of the probe, even tiny movements of the probe, 
uh, are registered as movement on the screen. That's in so color. Perhaps, yeah, and no, in power. Okay, in power, I'm with you. Power Doppler. Power Doppler is supposed to show slow flow or flow that is moving very close to parallel. Gotcha. It's supposed to show it up better. Okay. But it does that. But to do that, it has to, it's much more likely to register artifact from just tiny movements in the yes. structure. And everything I can else. see that. Yeah. So, um, whereas if you have color flow, it's not very good at seeing stuff that's going parallel, but it's much better as soon as the stuff moves away from parallel. Yeah. So it sees stuff that is moving away from the thing and you can adjust the sensitivity to see that low flow in this direction, be much more sensitive to that because you're not trying to see the flow that is just going very parallel to it. Now in musculoskeletal, all the flow you're interested in is in the random squiggly vessels yes. that occur in things. You're not interested in low flow in... Correct straight vessels so i don't give a damn about seeing the flow there because i know that all the vessels i'm looking for have a curly whirly direction and i'm quite happy picking them up here to here and ignoring this bit so i'm ah. more sensitive color. i'm more sensitive seeing the bits here i and think I don't... I'm, i've got you man I, yeah. I, I, I think I've got you. The, the one thing that's throwing me is, is the orientation that you're using because every time you say parallel, my mind is saying perpendicular. And every time you say perpendicular, my mind is saying parallel. But I think you must be saying to the orientation of the actual footprint plane, not, footprint. not to the orientation of the, the, the sound. No, orientation of the probe. Okay, and okay. Vessels that are parallel to yep. it yep. are are not seen as well on color as on power doctor. Because in, in order to get color differentiation, they must have to throw the, the, the signal out at an angle so that they no. can... No. no oh, the man. The I don't have from, much time no. for you to correct me, man. <laughs> no, the, the, the signal from color, if you don't adjust the shape of the box, if the box is going straight down, yes. then the color signal, then the, the, then the sound is interrogating straight down. How does it know the difference between, if I go long axis on a vessel, I can actually see it blue one way and red the other from the center yeah. of the probe. Yes, and that's because your vessel is just about parallel. Yes. And probably got a slight sway in it. Oh, it's not because it's angling the, 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 the interrogation. To, to determine not, if it's coming. It might, it, it might be doing something like that, but I'm not, if it is, then I'm not aware of that. Yeah. It's usually that it's, it's sensitivity. It, when you get it just right, it's guessing at the very, at, at the very uh, tips. This is incredibly valuable to me, John. You've already given me so many more pearls. Now run before your wife says you can't talk to me again. <laughs> no worries. I did, I, did want, I did want to show you one little video. Oh, good, uh, good. I just, uh, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I have to come back and find this. I've got 15 desktops open at the moment. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not sure I do anymore. It's, it's, it's got to be too many on, on, on my thing. So I'm just going to see if I can show you this. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and then share again. So I want to put this on here. Okay, right. So a little clip here. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it just fine. Okay. So this is a poorly taken video of mine. That there is what we're looking at. And we'll is come back meniscus? to it. No. Oh, 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 wait a minute. This is, this is spine. That's a pro, what looks like a little prolapse disc. Yeah, yeah. In, into the ALL or into the anterior longitudinal ligament, yes? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Let's see if I can, can I make this in bigger? Let's see. Screen. 
It's not a second. Can you see it there? I can see it fine. You see that? That's there is the wow. prolapse disc. Wow. Now, if I if if I was a quality scanner, I would have the focus <laughs> down further than you see there, which I did do live scanning. But the clip I took, I was quite surprised to see it, and I was I was doing a, a hernia scan on somebody. And uh, but there we have it. I think this is just prolapsed wow. out. Wow. Yeah. Now there's there actually go. some That's density cool. spots in that too. It, it, just debris. No, this this is a this is a, a low echo uh, probe. I was at this point. I was just making sure I was I, I knew which level it was at because if I was going to call it, they would they would probably laugh at me. So I had to actually be able to tell them there that disc looks is protruding quite a lot there. Was the symptoms relevant to that, or was that sim just simply a finding? The patient was symptomatic in their back. That's probably the best view there. Wow. So, but that wasn't that wasn't the symptoms I was looking at. There was query, and that's how I'm in short axis there. Yeah, and I haven't done a particularly good job of getting it, but that you can see the, the typical breadth of the of the prolapse. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, we, we were talking about it last time, weren't yes, we? Yes, right. yes. I I, I, I I just I cannot wait until I have a probe in hand or a transducer in hand that has the whatever for me to try and do that. And and, yeah. and I'm I'm going to be looking for those uh, those those nerve roots, John. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. One, uh, one last thing before you go. I, just while while we were talking, uh, can you see this? This is an example of uh, this is a a trigger finger, but there's actually yes. some synovitis around there. And can you see the synovial lining there? I can. You've got fluid there. You've got synovium there. And, uh, and you've got the base membrane of the uh, uh, synovial sheath there. Is that just simply the matrix in your mind of fibrin and, and, and a, 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 a exudate of some kind of a protects a protective response or is that do we just not know no this is uh, this bright line here yeah that's is is, is the fabric of the capsule it you know, it is synovial, synovial lining yes of the capsule yes and yes yes it is, it is that boundary and thing with the muscle some muscle underneath i think there uh this is that sponge that yes sponge that expanded like something out of a I'm trying to think something does that, but uh, responds and fills up. <laughs> like, I'll, tell you, uh, I'll tell you what does it. It's the dry stuff in your kid's diaper. It, it, yes, it, it, that's <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. That was, that, I, didn't know, I was trying to think of some other. But some All you have to do is put them in a swimming pool, buddy, and they come out looking like they've got xenophytes. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's what... Uh, that, that, that's what occurs to these things. Right? Do you see so, this yeah. in your mind as a full um, um, spectrum halo, or is it that way because that's where the predominance of the irritation is? In your mind, are you saying, oh, that's got to exist throughout well, the there's, whole? There's none at the top. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, so that would, because uh, we're not seeing anything that resembles the synovium yeah. there. So, so either the pressure is greater there and it's not expanded, because that will happen as well. You don't often, we, we, we know that the uh, uh, trochanteric bursa is, is irritated in a lot of patients, and yet we almost never see synovitis there. Inside the bursa, it does have a synovial lining. Yeah. I, I know that normal, sounds but you almost But you almost never see synovitis there. Interesting. So, and, and that, that is likely, from my mind, that is likely to be because there is significantly more pressure there. Yeah. Because, it's, because it's, you have two solid things pushing together. How would you ever develop edema there? It only ever occurs in the recesses, in the absence of a tear, yeah. I would have said. And uh, so, so you get irritation, but you don't get the classic visual appearance of synovitis. And, and when people have seen that in the past, what they've been looking at is probably the tendon itself or the tendon itself and being low echo, either an isotropy or whatever. Anyway. Thank you for sharing. That was all I, I thought I would show you. <laughs> um, 
in the next period of time before you allow me to talk to you again, I am going to be sending you a rough um, outline of a PowerPoint I'm putting together as it relates to terminology. Um, just simply of probe management. Would love to have your candid comments uh, okay. just simply about that works, that doesn't work. If it doesn't happen, I understand your schedule's crazy, but I I any willingness you have to give me some critical feedback, I would appreciate that. And again, as always, thank you for your time, John. It, it is very valuable to me, and um, okay. we'll, we'll connect again if you'll let me. Yep, I'll see you soon. All right, take care. See you next week.